Kwiatkowska and you're watching Back at Home. Today, the music of Claude Debussy. Debussy calls his cycle very unassumingly preludes. However, every prelude has a title, but Debussy does not give it to us at the beginning of the piece. In fact, he places it after a byline in parentheses after a dot, dot, dot. This way, Debussy is not imposing the mood of the piece onto the listener, but rather asking the listener to use his or her instinct.
I love asking my students if they were a so-called impressionist composer, which by the way is a term that Debussy wasn't so fond of, what would you do? What compositional devices would you use to write a piece called La Cathédrale Engloutie, the Submerged Cathedral? We're talking a lot about open chords. And these are the chords that are neither major nor minor. They are simply composed of these perfect intervals, fifths, fourths, and octaves. The students often talk about the ascending and descending chords that describe perhaps the waves. Well, how about some bells? Impressionist painters, Debussy is using the tone color and mixes it in new ways. Debussy also uses very poetic descriptions in the score by giving us instructions for performance. Here, for example, on page two of the prelude, he writes, peu à peu sortant de la brume, as though slowly coming out of the fog. And he writes this in French. As you may know, the language of music until the 19th century has been very decidedly Italian. Now composers are starting to write in their own native languages to describe what they want from a performer. to the climactic point of the prelude, I swear we can hear the organ of the cathedral emerging right here. Debussy's homage to the music of the Middle Ages, music that was actually created in a cathedral, that of Notre Dame in Paris. And the technique is called the parallel organum. By the way, by the time Debussy was in the Paris Conservatory, using parallel fifths or parallel octaves could immediately make you fail your assignment, not to mention the entire course. And that's exactly what happened to Debussy. comfortable C major here, one would expect that it would make for a great moment to finish the piece. But we are far from the end. Debussy folded back into the unknown by creating this transition. He switches from A flat to G sharp, which on the piano is the same key receives a completely different color and then he introduces something that could as well be Gregorian chant. Even the notation of the piece is reminiscent of earlier notation. Debussy uses a lot of large note values, whole notes and half notes tied often over many measures. 
to close a piece off, Debussy gives us for one last time that organ subject, this time in pianissimo, over an accompaniment that appears to be in an entirely different meter. So we have, in effect, a bit of a poly meter here. famous conversation that was recorded between him and his former teacher Giraud where Debussy talks about the time signatures and how one time signature could never be enough for a piece of music. You often notice how the meter tends to fluctuate in Debussy's output and Debussy at the very end of the piece returns to la sonorité du début, the beginning sonority with This video inspires you in your practice. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. I always invite you to subscribe to my channel where you will find more videos on the music of J.S. Bach and other composers. Thanks for joining me. Stay well.